Hello, my name is Rob Evans and I'm the School Safety Liaison Officer for Vermont's Agency of Education and Department of Public Safety. And I'm here with Ms. Emily Harris, who's the Northeast Regional Coordinator for Vermont Emergency Management. And we'd like to talk with you today about family reunification and the standard reunification method from the I Love You Guys Foundation. And this really is a practical method to unite students with parents after an evacuation or a crisis that takes place at your school. And certainly with some of the critical incidents that we have dealt with uh, in the state of Vermont uh, over the years, this has been one of those key elements that if we don't get this right, it, it's going to cause us some significant pain points after, we're, after we deal with uh, and respond to a critical incident. This is a method that by no stretch of the imagination is the only way of doing this, but it is a guide or a template for folks to put together and to follow uh, when they are putting their family reunica reunification uh, processes together. I will also like to direct your attention to the Vermont School Safety Center's website uh, under the resources page where there is a uh, best practice uh, emergency operations plan template that was provided by several municipalities and, and, and large school districts and supervisory unions uh, in Vermont that, that put a very in-depth uh, family reunification process in place. Uh, so if you folks have questions after going through this and want to take a look at an actual template, I would suggest that you direct your attention to that as well. This is the reunification process that's spelled out in the standard reunification method. As you'll see on the left-hand side, here are the broad items that need to be accomplished during any reunification process. And on the right-hand side, you'll see a sample card that can be used during any actual reunification. Your school today could go and print off a bunch of these forms and have them on hand should you need to reunify. So you can have information about the student and then have the parents send, uh, fill out some information as well. So again, and this is not a requirement, this is just a, an item that can be used uh, to assist you in your reunification process. And I, and I would say that you know, if you think about when and why and how we need to do a family reunification, there, there has been something that has taken place that has caused us to move from our school location to another location um, to, to reunify our, our students with, with our parents or guardians. And if you think about all the, all the issues and the logistical items that have to be uh, executed to, to do this in an appropriate fashion, we are moving students, we are moving faculty and staff to a completely different and maybe not very familiar location. We have to keep accountability in place and communication in place. We have to think about bathrooms and logistics and, and personal hygiene and, and maybe emergency medical support and traffic control and those types of things. So this uh, standard reunification model will walk you through some of those uh, specific duties and responsibilities. And again, the idea is that you would modify this for your school. So let's pretend at your school you've already got it figured out who's going to feed your students. So maybe you don't need to have a role in there that's going to be responsible for finding food. So this model can be modified just like any ICS model for those of you familiar with the incident command system. You'll notice that this looks somewhat familiar because the idea is that you can expand it and contract this to meet the needs of your particular school during that particular incident. And Emily, I, I'm glad you, you put that point in there because the, this, if we are operating under the ICS and NIMS process for all of our critical incidents, this is a easy way to manage yet another portion of a critical incident response in in a process that we all should be familiar with. There's nothing new or different. It's how to manage a critical incident using ICS. So great titles and, and roles and responsibilities for that. So also in the standard reunification method, it gives you some sample maps of what you might want to diagram it to look like at your reunification location. Obviously, the maps that are in this book are for uh, explanatory purposes only. It's not going to be for your particular facility. So please do look at these and modify them to fit your needs. So as you'll see on the left-hand side, you've got a broad overview that's showing your parking as well because it's important to have your students coming in in a different location than your parents. And then if you look on your right-hand side, it's a more in-depth. So where are the students going to be? Do you have a secluded area for counseling if needed? Do you have a secluded area 
for investigation if needed. So really do take these as a sample and modify them to fit the needs of your reunification site. And I think one of the key points with this is if, if you look at the picture in the top left hand corner, depending upon the size of your school, you're going to need to make sure that you have a facility that can handle all of the things that are going to need to take place, not only occupying that facility with your faculty, staff, and student body, but knowing that you may have first responders there, knowing that you're going to have parents and guardians coming there, knowing that there may be media and other resources that are going to be coming there. So logistically, the footprint has to be big enough to accept this but also the traffic flow issues that may be associated with how you're logistically going to have those, those seamless hookups between the kids and their parents and those connections of how that's going to happen in a reasonable, safe, and, 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 and easily facilitated process. The other thing to note is that if you're going to another school to have your reunification process, keep in mind that there are students already at that school who still need to leave for the day. And where are they going to be positioned and how are they going to leave? So keep in mind that when you're going to a facility, that facility may have its own challenges that are going to need to be worked out during an incident. And it's best to have these conversations ahead of time to say, we are going to free up the auditorium for this reunification process, and the students that are already in the school are going to remain in their classrooms, they're going to use this different exit to get out and board their buses. So figure out all of those challenges ahead of time and how you might resolve them. And Emily, some of, you, you talk about challenges. Some of the things that we have seen when we have done some of these exercises stuff and learning points along the way or make sure that our portable radios work in our family reunification site as well make sure that we've got good cell phone connectivity make sure that we have folks that have incident command vests or things that identify them as a as a person uh, in position of authority and responsibility so that when parents do come they know who should who they should be looking for or appropriate signage that says parents check in here or or easels or dry erase boards something that's going to make the flow of the reunification site work a little bit easier. And make sure that you're corresponding with your local first response organizations. And some of the schools that we've talked with, they've made an assumption that law enforcement will just take care of traffic control. Well, depending on what incident is causing you to relocate, those first response organizations may be occupied dealing with that incident and unavailable to come and help you with traffic control. So have those conversations ahead of time. So next, we've talked about how it's important to have the roles and responsibilities for your team when the incident actually happens, but it's equally important to have roles and responsibilities for your planning team. So who is going to be responsible for creating this plan and maintaining this plan? How are you going to be reaching out to your law enforcement organizations, your fire, your medical, your uh, local emergency management director? Make sure that you include legal and insurance in there as well, because they need to review this plan and make sure there are no challenges to you in this plan. So really it's important to form this plan, make sure that you have people filling those roles and that you're working together to keep this plan up to date, practiced, so that you know when you actually need it, it's available and it's going to work for you. And Emily, I, I think a, a portion of the planning team to not forget about is the mental health component associated with this. As we learned from last year's academic year in the South Burlington and the Essex uh, incidents that we all had to, they had to deal with, we know that there was a significant uh, mental health uh, uh, component to that, especially in the reunification and, and, and in dealing with the aftermath. So just make sure that those resources, we are coordinating with them as well to make sure that they can be there not only at the reunification, but in the days that may follow yes. and, and after a critical incident that takes place. So one of the plans that you're going to want to create is a district reunification plan. So this is created at the supervisory union or district level and says how is reunification going to work throughout this district. And this is a broad plan that's going to talk about media management. For example, is it the responsibility of the schools to fill that role or is it going to be taken over by the district? What general roles and responsibilities do we have so that we can share resources between schools when something is happening. So this is one of the plans you want to have and in this template it discusses the different items that should be included in that plan. And in a previous training that uh, that Emily and I did that talked about the supervisory union and district um, development of, of an emergency operations plan and the planning template, just understand that 
when a school is actively engaged in the response specifically for that school, they may not have the resources to deal with all of the other things associated with a family reunification. And that's where the leveraging and the force multiplication can take place at the SU or district level by bringing in other folks within that SU or district to help that individual school go through some of these things. So just a great, great resource and again a, a thing to be doing at the uh, at the district level as well. Just one also thing to note is if you'll notice number eight is district and school go kits. So one of the things that we've heard is very successful is having a couple of different kits that are specific to reunification that are positioned throughout the district. So not every school will necessarily have a tent and signage and everything for that reunification site, but they're located throughout the district and they're all the same. So you can deploy those to whatever sites are being used. Next we get into the school reunification plan. This offers a lot more detail. It includes the maps for uh, evacuation and the where buses are going to be going and the notification procedures specific to that school. So this is taking the information from that broader district plan and moving it down to the school level with a lot more detail. And just like, like we talked about in, in SU planning, just understand that if this is a regionally uh, based incident that there may be um, collective resources with the, within the SU that are being tasked to do things at, at individual schools. So we just need to make sure that the resources that we have and we say that are available are going to be available and not just a one school incident, but if we have multiple schools within the SU or the district that are involved. And things like transportation and, and seasonal issues that a walking route in, in September, October time frame to our evacuation or relocation site looks very, very different for a January, February, March time frame as well. So all those types of things that we look at, make sure we're looking at a 365 degree uh, view of what that's going to look like for us. So to go off that, one of the important things to also have is a memorandum of understanding with your reunification site to discuss how you're going to meet those challenges 365 days a year. So if you're going to one site for reunification, who is responsible for plowing that driveway so that students can get there and parents can go there to meet them? Because if that facility isn't uh, always being accessed, it may not be a maintained entrance. Also figure out in that memorandum of understanding who's responsible for the facility maintenance afterwards. Who's going to clean up? Is the school going to pay someone to do that? Is the school going to send custodians there? What does that look like? So it's very important within your school reunification plan to include the memorandums of understanding that exist. And again, just like every plan, making sure this is up to date, making sure this is reviewed on a regular basis, and that the information in there is still valid, that the person who used to own that facility still owns that facility and still will honor that memorandum of understanding. And Emily, just to close this section off, probably number 21, the notification procedures, yes. um, you know, it, it, we need to be having those conversations with our parents and guardians about what are their expectations and what are your expectations of them. Um, not coming to the school, not coming specifically until uh, told when to do so. What do you want them to do when the emergency is taking place? Make sure that we're having those conversations pre-incident because if you're having them during the incident and, and after, obviously that's going to cause all kinds of issues. So just let them know how you're going to be communicating during, during an emergency, Where's who's going to be the single point of contact, where should they tune into to get more information, and what's the expectation of, of what they're supposed to be doing when these types of things are taking place. And once you've created this plan, it's important for you to test this plan. So you can start through our tabletop exercises available online. These are video facilitated dialogues which will say, okay, you now have a plan, let's give you a scenario and you talk through what you would do in response to that. Then if what you talk through is different than your plan, maybe you update your plan to reflect this new information. So it's important to exercise this and then eventually, this is a building block approach, maybe you'll get to a place where you will actually be testing your reunification plan by having students being moved on a bus or however to your reunification site. Maybe you will include parents in this process, but that's a ways off after you create your plan. So create your plan, train, train people in your plan, then exercise your plan. 
Folks, if you have any additional uh, questions or concerns uh, after going through the training, I, I, I would address you or have you address the, the Vermont School Safety Center's website. Uh, the website location is on the bottom of this screen. And also reach out for Emily or I. We are available any time of day to, uh, to answer questions and certainly can provide a, a ton more resources if you have questions moving forward. So thanks for participating. Have a great day.